volta com Siga o Mestre, hoje entrevistando o professor Jeffrey Leiter. Professor, uh, we said that in 1973, not the world discovered Toyota, but the Japanese discovered Toyota. So when did the world discover Toyota? It was, it's been gradually, and it's still happening even today. The, uh, I say the Japanese because originally it was the Japanese government that realized Toyota is doing something different, and it was the Toyota production system, and that led to uh, a set of uh, training courses for Japanese industry led by the Japanese government. Uh, the next step that was significant was the American auto companies uh, starting to discover Toyota. And that was just industry to industry, auto industry to auto industry. And that really started seriously, I think, in the early 1980s. So there was probably six, seven, eight years uh, before the American companies started to be serious about at least investigating the Toyota production system. And then after the auto industry, I mean, the auto industry really didn't seriously try to adopt their version of the Toyota production system until the 1990s, uh, the American auto industry, that is. But then, since then, uh, since late 1990s, 1997, 98, and then particularly uh, in the last four years or so, there's been kind of an epidemic spreading the whole world in hospitals and service industries and government. All so kinds of industries. All kinds of industries. While talking to you, I realized that you used two expressions, TPS, Toyota Production System, and Toyota Way. What is the difference? Actually, Toyota used those same two words uh, at different times. The Toyota production system was originally created inside of manufacturing, and it was created by a guy named Taichi Ono. He's given credit, at least many people worked on it. And it was specifically in manufacturing, on the shop floor, getting his hands dirty and trying to create the best quality at the lowest cost, and everything was just in time. Uh, and he was very successful, and he built up this whole methodology called the Toyota production system. Later, actually it was in the 1980s uh, and into the 90s that TPS, the Toyota production system, was brought to America by Toyota. And at that time, Fujio Cho, who is now the chairman of Toyota, was bringing TPS to America in Kentucky, in Georgetown, Kentucky, which is their largest plant in the Toyota counties. And he realized that there was a management philosophy in Japan that the Americans weren't really learning well enough, that they were learning the methods of TPS and the tools, but not the thinking and the management philosophy. So it's a philosophy. It's a philosophy. Can we talk a little bit about the TPS then? Yes, uh, yes sir. What's so fantastic about it? I see that you, uh, you mentioned reflection, get out of your desk and go to the shop floor, right. um, buy just what you need, do not pile right. up, right. just in time. Uh, what is all about? Well, the way you just mentioned that, I thought we were going to say is that sounds like common sense. It sounds like good sense not to have extra and things you don't need to be to be actually knowledgeable about what's going on in your own business. Uh, when you look at it that way, these things sound pretty much like common sense. And very often people in Toyota will sort of shrug their shoulders and say it's just common sense. Uh, but. I guess what's so fantastic about it is somehow the world got on this track where we weren't following common sense, uh, where these companies Why? got... Why? Because we didn't need to. I think that uh, part of it was just getting big, and particularly in, a, in the West, getting fairly rich and maybe a little bit arrogant. And uh, But we started to have specialists all over the place who were specialist administrators and specialist uh, accountants and specialist schedulers and spec and people sort of forgot what they were doing that made money, <laughs> which is called value added in the Toyota production system. You find the value added and everything else is waste and you try to strip away that waste. You don't have to find the value added and strip away waste if you don't have a lot of waste, if you're focused on the value added, which I think a lot of small companies and organizations were 200 years ago. So I think, in a sense, we've kind of created these big bureaucracies and these complicated organizations, and we kept on adding layers and layers of waste. Are you saying that Toyota 
who is paying attention to the common sense and I shaking think they people are. like, I think they come are. on, where is the common sense? And they're a unique company in a lot of ways. I mentioned them starting with Sakib Gutierrez, who's a visionary and a genius. Throughout the company, as they grew, they were always focused on the same thing. How do we make the best quality cars for our customers at the lowest cost without waste? And they and when they grew, they were always concerned. What if we add this person uh, and then we don't need this person? Or they'll find something to do. Uh, so they're very conservative about growing, about adding people. And anyone who came to the company, the first thing you do, even an accountant, is go to the shop floor and build cars and uh, learn the basics of how you make cars. No matter what your specialty, uh, specialty is going to be or your There's career is going to be, yeah. I mean you have to have the experience. Yes. Like, for example, every engineer hired into Toyota in Japan spends two to three months in the factory building cars as, as part of their first year in the company. Outside Japan, they don't always have the luxury of doing that, to, but they will always spend time in the factory building cars. I'm glad you are giving me an example about the human side of it. Besides adding value, I realize that you say, you talk a lot about respecting people. This is another fundament of the well, Toyota. Well, when Toyota had to try to explain the Toyota way and make it explicit instead of implicit, uh, they concluded that there really were two pillars to the Toyota way. One is respect for people, and the other is continuous improvement. And those two go hand in hand. You can't expect people to contribute their best ideas and care about improving uh, what they do if they don't feel that you have respect for them. So those two go hand in hand. That's the Toyota way. And part of respecting people that's a little bit not so common sense is that the Toyota definition of respect is that I challenge you to be the best you can be, which may not be very comfortable for you all the time. So I may be pushing you to the next level of challenge when you are pretty happy where you're at. Uh, and they're always pushing and pushing. So uh, some would interpret that as not respect for people. They think stress, a stressful environment. So what Toyota views as respect may be you know, not always the same as others. Uh, but they, uh, the spirit of challenge, is one, of, one of the sub-principles is the spirit of challenge. And Another part of the belief is we can't give you respect. Part of respect is uh, having a secure job. And I can't guarantee all our team members a secure job unless we are very competitive and we're winning. And uh, that means that we have to somehow do things that feel uncomfortable. Like we have to be flexible in, in what jobs we do. We might have to work through breaks sometimes. We might have to work overtime sometimes. Uh, and again, that's kind of a sometimes a bit of a paradox. How do you treat people with respect, but expect them to really work hard? O modelo Toyota é revolucionário. Várias empresas tentaram copiá-lo, mas será que este modelo é copiável? Siga o mestre, volta já. Música